All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oluwashio, and we've been looking at Docker, all right, for the past one week. And today we want to look at, you know, environment variables. Basically, what we want to look at is how do we, you know, protect our passwords or maybe some values that we want to pass into, all right, the containers that we want to use Docker Compose to start. For example, uh, you know, what you have right here, you have a Postgres database. Uh, the Postgres DB, which is Modo, all right, is at coded in the Docker Compose file. The Postgres user is also at coded. The Postgres password is also at coded. Now, of course, let's assume this is a production environment and you are going to check this Docker Compose file into your GitHub repository or your GitLab or Bitbucket. Now, this is not uh, a good use case because if you check this in into your GitHub, right, GitHub has, you know, this kind of, you know, well, let me call it an AI that actually checks your you know, files, you know, to ensure that you don't have any encoded secrets, all right, inside of your file. And sometimes they send you a notification that they see that maybe there's a password leak or something inside of the file that you have checked in to the repository. So basically, they are protecting you uh, from accidentally pushing files that contain sensitive data into your GitHub. Is that okay? So even if your GitHub account is private, all right, it is still not best practice to check in, you know, sensitive data into your GitHub repository, considering the fact that you are not the only person working on that particular repository. All right. And even if it's your own personal repository, I mean, you never can tell anything could happen. Now, if we're using Docker Compose, the question is, how can we okay protect this data okay i don't want my db name to be at coded into the docker compose i don't want my db user to be seen in the docker compose i don't want my db password all right to be you know reflected here so how can i protect these values now if you go over to the documentation now there are several ways by which you can actually you know protect your password uh, in Docker Compose or when you're using Docker Compose. Now, there are two ways you can actually do it. Now, there's the environment variable where you create an environment file, okay? And then you specify or you define the passwords you want to use and the data, all right, that you want to reference inside of a Docker Compose file. You basically state it in that file. That is one way. Now, if you're using uh, what is called Docker Swap, which is a container orchestration for Docker, all right, you can also specify what you call Docker secrets. Okay. Now, take a look at the documentation here. So, this is the Postgres database. Now, if you scroll down here, uh, you're going to see the different options that you have. Okay. Now, this is the one we'll be using, which is to add code, uh, the password. Okay, and then if you look at an example here, which is more like a Docker Compose uh, example, you can see that the password was also at coded. Is that okay? Now, if you scroll down a bit, uh, you are going to find, all right, now this is an environment variable right here. Okay, so if you scroll down a bit, you can also see um, some examples, which I would show us right here. So let's take a look at the documentation uh, together. Okay, so we're looking at something here. So let's see if we're going to find something. Okay, uh, we, we can't seem to find that here. But then let's take a look at another database, if that is going to be easier for us to locate. Okay, it's just something. All right, okay, I think I see it here now. Now here you have Docker Run, the name of the database, all right, and then you have the Postgres password underscore file. Can you see that? The Postgres password underscore file. Okay, and then here it says it is equal, all right, to run slash secrets and then the file. Now, this particular, all right, variable type, it is particularly used with Docker secrets, which basically means you have to be running Docker swap in order to use this. If you're running Docker Compose, all right, as a standalone, Okay, you cannot actually actually use this particular variable. Okay, because this works with Docker Swap. 
Is that okay? Now, the one that we can use because we are running Docker Compose as a stand alone, or right, we don't have any Docker Swarm, you know, set up already. Like I said, Docker Swarm is a container orchestration for Docker. Since we do not have a Docker Swarm, we will not be able to use this variable or this Docker secret, okay, with our Docker Compose. So what we can do is to create an environment variable file inside our project directory and then inside of that file we'll basically specify all right the key and the value the key and the value the key and the value so for example postgres password equals the value all right postgres username equals the value postgres db equals the value all right and then in the docker compose file we'll basically use the dollar sign to basically you know reference that particular variable all right that we have declared or basically the key all right that we have declared and then docker compose knows exactly how to fetch the value from that key so that is exactly what we're going to do so if i go back to the file i already created another directory all right and for my docker compose you will see here that i already used a variable for this so i have dollar in bracket the key all right that i want docker compose to use all right to fetch the value from and inside of this file you can see that this file ends with dot env okay and that is actually the standard name it has to end with what dot env which basically tells docker compose that this is an environment all right variable file so if you click on this environment variable file, you can see my definitions here. Now, one thing I need to also mention here is that by the time you are checking in your code into your GitHub, this particular file should actually be added to your Git ignore because it is not best practice to check this particular file into a GitHub repository. So anybody that wants to make use of the Docker Compose, that means they will have to create their own environment file. Is that okay? So when you're checking this code into your GitHub repository, all right, be mindful to, to, all right, to, you know, excuse, let me use that word, the environment file, okay, from what you want to push into your Docker, all right, compose. And you can simply do that. I mean, you can just come here, all right, you can come outside here, create a file, and then you can call that dot git, all right, ignore, okay? Dot git ignore, and then you can say dot asterisk env okay so basically you're saying that you want to you know you don't want to push anything that ends with oh, i don't think i mentioned that correctly okay so that should be asterisk dot env all right so that's the correct you know pattern so which means anything that ends with dot env should be ignored all right and not checked or pushed into my remote uh, repository so that's what this means is that okay so if i come here now all right, I mean, I may not see anything right here. Okay, so that env, all right, so I'm basically excusing that. So if you're creating your repository for the first time, make sure that you excuse that in your git ignore, all right, file. Is that okay? So that's how to go about that. So let's go back here. All right, so now you can see that I have the variable defined, and then right here, I have a defined. So module db equals this. So it's a key value pair thing. So the key is module db. The value is the name of the database that I want to create. db user is the key. Module underscore user is the value. db password is the key. Module underscore password is the value. pg admin email is the key. Admin at devops.com is the value and then pg admin password is the key then admin is the password is that okay so it's a key value pair all right thing okay and then right here i basically just reference using the all right dollar sign okay and that's how you reference you know variable for most language that you uh that you know so the dollar sign and then call it brace the key dollar sign call it brace and the key so with this now, my data, all right, is not encoded in the Docker Compose. Is that all right? Because I basically used variable for everything. Now, the question is, again, now, how do, will Docker Compose read, okay, this particular variable? How will it read it? Now, if you want to start this particular application right here, now, you can do that simply, okay, by doing this. So let me change directory into the folder okay so this is the folder so if you want a docker compose to read this what you can do is to say docker compose all right i think i think env i think file that's the option and of course if you're confused about this like i've always told us you can also use i think help to see the options that you can actually use 
So if you scroll up, you're going to see iPhone, iPhone ENV right here, which basically says specify an alternate environment file. Is that okay? So the command is docker compose iPhone, iPhone ENV iPhone file, and the name of the file is docker iPhone compose.env. That's the name of the file. So what I am telling Docker Compose is that all the variables that I've defined in the Docker Compose file, this is the file that contains the value for all the keys that I have referenced, okay? So which means by the time Docker Compose is starting all the containers you have defined in the Docker Compose file, it is basically going to read this environment file and of course give, all right, fetch the value from there and then pass that in, all right, to the containers. Is that okay? And then I can say, oh, I think D, so up means start the containers. IFND basically means, I mean, just start it in the background. Don't take over my terminal, all right? And then I press enter and voila, everything, all right, was created. Okay, because I already have the PG image. I already have, I mean, all the other things uh, created right there. Okay, so I mean, it doesn't take too much time to load up. Okay, now I can say Docker PS. All right, I can see all the files, all right, all the containers have started actually. Is that okay? So I can see three containers that have started. So now if I go back to my container right here, I can see all the three containers right here. Okay, so now if I come here, so my PG admin is running on port 81. So I can come here and say localhost, all right, column 81. Okay, and I can actually access my PG admin. So the thing now is, uh, let me log in. So the login is going to be, so I can check the variable. Uh, for that is admin at devops.com. All right, so I can say admin, okay, at, at um, devops.com, and then the password is admin, right? And then I'm able to log in. So now if I'm able to log in, it basically tells me that the environment variable works, all right? And my Docker Compose was able to read that particular environment file. And that's why I'm able to log into my PG admin, all right? And right here, I can come here now and connect to my, all right, Postgres server. So the name is Postgres, all right? And I can come here to connections, all right? It's Postgres. Okay, and this one is the username is model underscore user. The password is model underscore password. Okay, and then I can say save. And if everything is fine, I'm able to connect to my database. And if I click on the model database, you can see right here on the right, it says, I mean, database connected. So that tells you that the environment variable actually worked. So that is how to protect, all right, your password and any other sensitive data within Docker Compose by using environment variable. So this way, if you check this into your repository, I mean, the only thing people will see here is just the key that you're referencing. So anybody that wants to make use of this Docker Compose, they will have to create or write their own variable or write file as well. Okay. So thank you so much. And I'll see you all right on the next one. Bye for now.